So King Cool Online here with Brad Fang. How you doing, man? Hey, doing well, yourself? Good. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, Brian from Brad Fang. Play guitar. Uh, yell occasionally. <laughs> Where'd the name Brad Fang come from? Um, it doesn't have any real meaning or anything. It's uh, just what we all uh, hated the least of all the ideas we came up with. We uh, we aggravated over quite a while. That was when we were all weren't weren't. Uh, Violently against. Right, right. Now I understand uh, there's a Dungeons and Dragons tribe dedicated to the, the name? Yeah, I've seen that on the internet occasionally. Anything to do with you or? No. Uh, cool. How'd you guys get together? Um, well, we, we've all known each other for a long time. and uh, um, I sort of, uh, my old band toured with, with um, David and John's old band, uh, so I met them in the late 90s. And then um, John and David moved to Portland, uh, and we started a band called uh, Party Time, and we played in that band for three, three and a half, four years. Then I left town, um, I moved to San Diego for a year, and in the meantime, they started playing uh, with Aaron, Okay. and uh, they started, started getting some riffs, um, and they sent me you know, some of the riffs they would come up with, and I thought they were great. And they asked me if I if I would move back up and be in the band. And I was trying to start a band down in San Diego forever, but the uh, hard rock scene is pretty pretty uh, sleepy down there. So right. it was really hard to find people that were that wanted to do the kind of music I wanted and you know had the time. Uh, so I was like, all right, screw it, I, I give up. And so my girlfriend is, uh, was cool enough to um, you know uproot and, and come uh, with me. And so that's how we started. Cool. Yeah. Now, your first album came out on Sergeant House Records in 2009. Uh -huh. That contained both your EPs on there, is that correct? That's, that's correct. Uh, both our EPs plus one new track. Cool. Way to get the music back out there. Get things going. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, we just were selling, you know, earned CDs for the first couple of tours we did. Uh, and um, we started talking to to Kathy, and she, uh, she liked the video and, and wanted to do something with us, and we wanted a record out. They said, well, look, you know, we, we're proud of those songs still, so it would be nice to have it, you know, get a proper release, you know, get a little bit of advertising and see, you know, fly to the flag, pull, see who's loops, and, and it seems like people are still buying it. It's cool. That's real cool. Yeah. It definitely is. Now, you're with Relapse Records now, uh -huh. and I understand they originally passed the first time I heard your stuff. They did, yes. How, how did the process go? Are you finally getting getting in with them? Um, I think it was probably we just annoyed them to the point that they uh, they uh, were like, all right, fine, shut up. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, uh, our our manager was uh, in contact with them. Our the guy who uh, Chris Funk who produced it, he he um, uh, was actively um, shoving the shoving the tapes in their face and you know making them sit down and listen to it. Um, but I'm really glad they did because it's, I think it's a perfect yeah. home, home for us, you know. Um, you know, we made that record out of, out of our own pocket. We didn't, you know, it was like, we made, did we just make some really expensive paperweight, you know? Right, right. So right. It's, it's really nice. And those guys have an office in Portland, so they're, you know, they're bros. We hang out at bars and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. How'd you go with Chris? I mean, he's from the Decembers, and that's kind of... Yeah, it's definitely not, not what you'd expect. Right. Um, he sent us an email... Uh, or several emails, uh, probably over a year before we recorded, saying he's just trying to get, he's interested in doing more um, producing now. Um, and when I, I first saw, saw I was like, what? December's dude? You're crazy. You yeah, know, right. so, but he was persistent, and uh, as we got closer to the, our, t our recording, or wanting to record, we went to a bar and sat with him, and uh, I uh, was just really surprised at how um, knowledgeable he was about hard rock. And, uh, obviously, he's you know his his band has had a lot of success, you know, so, uh, so he's been in the studio you know, where there's a really high production value and stuff, you know. So well, maybe he knows how to soak out you know a better sound out of an uh, you know, inexpensive situation. But in tech now, you know, it's not the greatest. Very good to do the in space. Right. Um, our engineer was excellent, but you know, I think he really knew how to, you know, uh, and, and he let us use a, a lot of his amps. He's got these 
was full of amps, so okay. we got to, you know, just like just, with all the toilets. Yeah, exactly. Our rough tracks, I think, I had four different amps going just for basic stuff, you know what I mean? It sounds killer. I was like, dude, yes, this is my, you know, walk into a room, just right. me, and so loud, I couldn't really even be in there when it was going. Wow. So Yeah, that's definitely cool. Yeah. Now, this CD you got out now is called Murder of the Mountains, and I understand when you guys did all the tracks, you had so many tracks that a lot of them didn't get included. Yeah, know. we recorded 17, mixed 14, and six to 10 we thought were the most cohesive. So, I mean, we intended to do that, because mm -hmm. we, you know, we were just writing songs and we weren't sure, you know, after they were recorded, which ones were going to work to you know, record them. I mean, some songs I like better as, you know, to listen to, uh, or I think is, be is better listening at home, and some of them, which aren't maybe the, the star tracks on the, on the, you know, or whatever, vice versa, that, that, that's, you know, that it's more of a live thing. The song really doesn't work just sitting and listen to it, but if it's but if something's jumping around, then it's 110 decibels. It's right, insane. right. Any chance ever releasing those tracks and something different, maybe another EP? Uh, some of them have been already out. I think the, well, we, um, Wires, uh, we put out a 7-inch, and the B-side of that is one of those tracks. Um, and then I think another one, I think may have been released through Relapse like a, as part of a deluxe package. So I think that, I mean, that they will probably all eventually get out there. Cool. But, I mean, it's just hard for us to get in the studio. So it's like if someone wants new content, it's like, well, right? Yeah, you, know, like you can't. You you want to be a part of something, but you know, you, we, it's going to take us. It'll probably take us another eight months before we can record again. So well, yeah. I mean, well, this year has been pretty hectic. We were touring, yeah, right? and it doesn't look like it's going to get any lighter next year. You know, so yeah, squeezing in song, you know, writing songs, let alone recording them. You know, we have to. I mean, we just need to uh, come up with a new technique for songwriting, just because we don't have the luxury of you know, being well, in your own home. Exactly. You know, right? yeah. yeah, and we're still in a van, so it's not like we can sit in the lounge yeah, on the Yeah, sit in the tour bus. And right. Just, right, you know, so. Now, uh, is that new van you got out there? That is, well, we bought it. Um, only, reason we, only reason I'm asking is I know you guys got in that accident a little while back. Yeah, yeah, we, um, that one's not going anywhere. That is, <laughs> that is junk deep. Uh, so. Yeah, it's I mean, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. It might be a year newer, but uh, less miles. Make sure you yeah. well with a nice cage in there. Make sure nothing like that ever. Yeah, we put the so it's the cage that that saved our asses the first time. That before we took that anywhere, we made sure that uh, our buddy Chris from Mongolia Village put a put an identical uh, uh, loft slash slash cage there, and it's and I think that's what saved our lives is having a cage where the equipment. Was going nowhere. Right, nobody right. could get at us, and it kept the the roof round instead of uh, collapsing. You know, yeah. There was a, you know, David was in that loft. I, I shudder to think, you know, if he, you know, if that hadn't been there, and, and there was just gear going everywhere. You know, right. So, yeah, definitely. Makes so if you're a touring band, make sure your gear can't is not where you are. Yeah, let us get her time. Most of us that. Right. right. <laughs> now. Uh, you <coughs> You just finished up the Mayhem tour, which was a, a big arena type concert. Now you're going with Mastodon. Yeah. And what's next? Um, I don't know yet. Uh, we I know we have s uh, several uh, festivals that we're going to play next year in Europe. Okay. So we have at least two European tours lined up. Um, nothing um, U.S. planned yet, but I'm sure we'll do the U.S. Just how to, whether we'll do it on our own or. We'll get a sport act, but it, there's nothing really solid yet. And there's some talk of doing a Canadian tour next year, so that's going to be you guys headlining this one, right? In in Canada, I, if if we do it, we're talking about headlining Canada, yeah. Cool. <coughs> and I would love to do a headlining in um, in the uh, you know states. It's just I mean like this this show I can't say no. Right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now this tour going to wrap off mid December in your hometown, actually, right? December 10th. Uh, yeah, well, this tour ends in Atlanta, and then we tour on our own. We, uh, we have our, we have, I think, six or seven headlining shows on the way home. And, yeah, December 10th, we're playing a show. It's a, it's a local restaurant's two-year anniversary. All right. And it's all comedians and us. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that should be pretty fun. Ryan Kassane and Ian Connell, another comedian. I can't remember who it is at the time, but yeah, three comedians and us. 
so it was a whole night of comedy. Right, right. We right. were writing a different kind of comedy. Yeah, definitely. Well, I mean, if you look at your videos, you definitely want to get some comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least our director does. Yeah, right. We can drink beer on you. But that was a good talent to get. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's on my resume. Cool, cool. So, where can the fans get a hold of the music, a hold of the band, things like that? Uh, Red Fang. Dot net, I believe is our, is our website. Of okay. course. We're on Facebook and uh, MySpace, Twitter, all that. Twitter. Right. We do Twitter, yeah. I've tweeted maybe three or four times now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm about the same there with Yeah, you. yeah, welcome to the 21st century. Now, how is that for you, honestly? I mean, I know a lot of bands are pushing to start doing all that Twitter and all that stuff. I mean, does that become kind of a, a hindrance or something <coughs> you don't really want to devolve into? No, I think it's, I think it's great. Um, I think it's the, it's, it makes, uh, it equalizes the, the, the playing field for, for musicians, I think. You know, it's not a matter of how much push someone has behind you. It's, it's more of what you put, what you're playing music that people are uh, enjoying. There, there's a way for it to get out there, you know, and just the open communication right. is incredible. So, you know, like I said, it seems like the major labels maybe are having trouble now because people are not buying physical copies as much anymore. <coughs> but it seems to be having the opposite effect for bands because you, you, can, you know, people can find out about your shows so much more easily. Right. And so and that's where bands make their money is on the road. So. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Anything you want to promote? Uh, come see these. Come see Mastodon. It's killer. It's awesome. Uh, when you'll repair this. Like, there's, mm -hmm. like, yeah, there's like six more shows left or something. And they've just been so fun. All right, sitting here with Red Fang. Make sure you check out redfang.net. We do a get link to the music, the Twitter, Facebook, all that shit. Record the show, man. Cool, thanks. Thank you.